ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय हरे कृष्णा सभी वेलकम ऑल आवर गेस्ट्स एंड स्टूडेंट्स एंड यूथ फॉर टुडे इवनिंग्स प्रेरणा फेस्टिवल द वन फिफ्टी फोर्थ इन अ कंटिन्यूस सीरीज over the last one 164 154th and the 16th year so ivs is for unmarried youth in the age group of 15 to 30 prerna has also reached that age now So today we will discuss about life balance and since tomorrow is the most auspicious <coughs> occasion of Ram Naomi, so we will also touch upon the concept of life balance as we can hear and understand from the past times of Lord Ramachandra. As everyone must be experiencing here in this age, balance is the most difficult. How many of you agree with this? Thank you. The topic is relevant. <laughs> so one time, there was a drunkard. And uh, Saraswati Thakur tells this story. So one of his friends decided to help him get some balance in life. So he told him that you're drinking too much. If you keep drinking like this, you'll go to hell. So the drunkard said, so what? My father also drinks. So his friend said, he will also go to hell. Drunkard said, my brother also drinks. Friend said, he will also go to hell. The drunkard said, but there are so many of my other friends with whom I sit and we all drink together happily. Friend said, they will all go to hell. So the drunkard said, if everybody is going to hell, then that hell is heaven where we'll sit and drink again. <laughs> so it is not easy to explain to people how to restrain one's life. And therefore, the human form of life is meant to understand these deeper concepts because only human beings have the capacity to do rational thinking and arrive at decisions with respect to self-restraint. I was going for a college program in one college and then one student met me, he was in great stress and anxiety. And we were walking towards the hostel. He pointed to a dog which was sleeping on the side. And the student looked at me and said, how fortunate this dog is. So I thought, oh, suddenly he has become like a great Vaishnava Acharya filled with compassion. <laughs> so I said, why are you saying like that? So I said, you know what, the dog has no exams. <laughs> and tomorrow is exams, and more importantly, I have not studied. <laughs> so I am filled with anxiety. So if you see the animals, their range of anxiety is only under the ambit of eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. But human beings have other types of anxieties beyond that. Animals will hardly complain about the taste of the food. You will not find a dog who will complain that the batata is not fried. <laughs> it is only boiled. Namak kyo kam hai? All those issues they don't have. You give them something, they'll eat, they'll forget. And they'll sleep peacefully. And in animal kingdom so far, Sleeplessness is not yet a problem. 
lack of sleep. Right? So the dogs keep barking at night, not because of insomnia. <laughs> so you may think that, oh, dog also is like me, <laughs> not able to sleep at night. But human beings have been given the extra intelligence which creates all kinds of anxieties, but that intelligence is ultimately meant to be dovetailed to understand the purpose of life. So when we read the Ramayana, the most crucial principle which we come across is right from the beginning, we find that there are challenges and difficulties in the life of even the greatest personalities. So when we say life balance, it doesn't mean that there will not be forces which will try to imbalance you. But although all kinds of forces will be there to shake off your balance, but if you are confident about your journey and if you are clear about the purpose of your life and you are sure what is your destination, then whatever may happen to you, even if you are thrown off balance, you will continue progressing in the journey towards the destination. So we are not discussing here how we remain steady at one place, but we are discussing how even if you become unsteady, even if you are thrown off, even if you start rolling on the ground, even if you slip, even if you have an accident, even if your journey is for some time temporarily restrained or restricted or stopped. The biggest problem is 99.99% of the world's population is not aware of the destination of this journey. So here we have invited everyone not just to learn how to drive safely but where to drive. And that's the more important aspect of life's balance. So therefore, if there is a smooth journey which is taking you to the wrong destination, like you have an exam and you are on a smooth highway to go to a cinema hall and you have a very bumpy road with, filled with speed breakers to go to your examination hall, which road you will take? Oh my God. <laughs> People have doubts. So well, if you are in a mood to write the exam, <laughs> you will definitely take the bumpy road. So therefore, the story in Ramayana begins with King Dasharat being the king of Ayodhya. So the meaning of the word Ayodhya means that kingdom which could never be defeated. So success is one of the catchy words which attracts people's attention and especially of the modern youth. Success. The secret of success. So you could not compare with Dasharat Maharaj in success because many of your ages are in the age group of 15 to 30 maybe. Dasharat Maharaj's age or the period for which he ruled successfully over Ayodhya without allowing any army to defeat was 60,000 years. So we will get complex by hearing that. 60,000 years. And in spite of ruling for 60,000 years, Dasharat Maharaj was going through a great frustration. And his frustration was he did not have children. So therefore, one of the first things which we learn in life is we cannot satisfy all our desires. Even if some desires are fulfilled, there may be other desires which will never be fulfilled. And that is the nature of this material world. So we first begin by understanding that the journey which we are embarking on in this world 
will be filled with uncertainties, challenges and difficulties. And even if you are successful in many ways, failure is around the corner, lurking around the corner and will strike us any time, any moment. And therefore, one of the first books Srila Prabhupada wrote was called Easy Journey to Other Planets. And in the easy journey to other planets, Srila Prabhupada brings in the concept of how beyond this material world, there is a place called the spiritual world. There was an ISKCON leader who was also a book distributor. And uh, he found a unique way to distribute books. He found that in America, there are lots of clubs who are attached to UFOs, unidentified flying objects. And he found one mutual UFO network. They were a group of people who were attached to understanding and studying and knowing more about UFOs. Some of you may have seen movies on UFOs or heard about UFOs. So this UFO club had their own database network with addresses and everything. So he would go to their houses and then knock on their door and when they would you know, greet him, he would show them easy journey to other planets. And they would say, what is this book about? And he would say, UFOs. <laughs> and although he was a Hare Krishna devotee, but while visiting there, he would go because he would think that they should not get bewildered. So he would wear a wig and go. He was shaved, but he would wear a wig and go. And then they would start asking questions about you know, which planet you're talking about and this and that. And then some of them would still not get convinced and many times they would ask, what do the residents there look like? So he would take off his wig. <laughs> <laughs> and they would buy the book for sure. <laughs> so Srila Prabhupada describes that Life in this material world means Dukkhalayam Ashashvatam. So in Ayodhya, we find that Dasharat Maharaj ruled for 60,000 years, but still, how things turned out in that place of Ayodhya was totally different. And so, the nature of this material world is material energy will always have a trap for us when we are least expecting it. And so we find that with the great difficulty, finally Dasharat Maharaj, through the advice of his ministers, managed to do a Putra Kameshti Yagya and he got sons. And the names of their sons was Ram, Bharat, Lakshman and Shatrugna. So Ayodhya basically means that city which cannot be defeated. And Ram means one who is the reservoir of all pleasure and beauty. So the speciality and unique feature of Lord Ramachandra was he looked so enchanting and so beautiful that his beauty defeated the beauty of everything and everyone in this world. So one of the things which every soul is looking for is to connect with beautiful objects, beautiful people, beautiful experiences in life. And Lord Ramachandra was an ocean of beauty. And therefore, it is described that Ramante Yogino Anante Satyananda Chidatmani Iti Rama Padenasau Param Brahma Vidyate. The word Ram means one who is an ocean of pleasure and those who are yogis are constantly hankering to connect with this ocean of pleasure. And Lord Ram was the symbol of all attraction for every citizen in Ayodhya. Each one of us, when we are aspiring for a relationship in this world, we are looking for something attractive. And therefore, 
when Śrīla Prabhupāda established ISKCON across the world, he established deities. So when you look at the deities, the deities give us an opportunity to put our eyes and vision on a symbol or an emblem of beauty. And therefore, the sum total of all beauty is in the reservoir of all beauty and pleasure, who is known as Rama. One who is atheist does not have faith in the presence of the Supreme Lord. And they keep questioning and doubting whether God exists or not. One time there was an atheist who visited India as a tourist. And then he went to many places. And then on the way out, the immigration asked him, so how was your experience, sir? And he said, when I entered this country, I was an atheist. But now, after visiting this place on the way out, I have belief in God. God exists. God has to exist. <laughs> so the immigration officer asked him, Sir, which temple you had darshan of? Which deities had the greatest impact on you? Whether it was Pandarpur or Tirupati or where you went? He said, no, no, I did not go to all these places, but I went to many, many offices and uh, India and Pakistan match going on, on cricket and many other cricket matches going on on television. People are sitting and watching for so many hours, still country is going on. <laughs> Who must be running it? God himself. So many of us feel the Supreme Lord, we don't see. How can I have faith? Therefore, in Ayodhya, every citizen could directly come in contact with the Lord. But the reservoir of pleasure takes birth in Ayodhya. But very soon, Ayodhya is going to be drowned in a great amount of sorrow. So the whole idea is this, that even if the reservoir of pleasure is present within this material world, still you cannot stop the influence of distress because the nature of this material world is dwandva, duality. And duality means once there is happiness, there will be distress. And when there is distress, there will be happiness. So Ram's brother's name is Bharata. So what is the meaning of name Bharata? Bharata means Bharavahi iti Bharata. One who carries great amount of load is Bharata. What was the load Bharat Maharaj was carrying? Number one, Bharat Maharaj was accused of being a co-conspirator in sending Ram to the forest. To be accused of doing something you have not done is a great load on the mind. It's difficult to digest. To feel that injustice has been done to me is one of the heaviest loads one can carry. And therefore, Bharat Maharaj spent his entire life with this load of having been misunderstood by the residents of Ayodhya. So therefore that is called Bhara. Bhara Vahi Iti Bharata. And secondly, Bharat Maharaj was given by Lord Ramachandra the task of taking care of the kingdom, although he did not want to do. So when you are motivated to do something from your heart, the language is, I want to do this. But if your head is speaking, then you say, I can do this. But then, when your willpower comes across, then you say, I will do this. So in Bharat Maharaj's case, he definitely did not want to rule over Ayodhya, but he was ordered by Lord Ramachandra. And because of that order, 
it was very difficult for him he was carrying that as a load upon his head in bhagavatam there is a beautiful verse which describes yascha murutamo loke yascha buddhe paramgata tau ubhav sukha medhete klishyanti antarito jana two categories of people are blissful in this world one who is a pure devotee who is beyond desires one who is purified of all desires he is in bliss and second one who is fully engrossed in sense gratification and doesn't know anything about spiritual life doesn't have any idea that there is a higher goal of life he doesn't see any difference between animal life and human life he is in his own world he also doesn't have much idea so he is kind of in his own state of so called happiness and to give an example just like in college there are two categories of students who are blissful before exam or free from anxiety before exam one who is a topper who has already done 10 times revision and is very eager and cannot sleep the previous night because he is so eager to write the paper next day he gets higher taste when exam date is announced and he goes around to other students before the exam giving them tension also <laughs> and you have not studied oh i studied one year back <laughs> you have not studied even once i can't even remember how many times i studied 12 times or 15 times so already the guy is in depression when he hears this he goes more into depression so he's all set for the exam he has studied well he is waiting he is awaiting the challenge the second kind of person who is free from stress is who has never gone to the class many times not seen the professor face also <laughs> many years ago i was doing a program in a nearby college you know in grand road and i went at around 11 o'clock in the morning i saw all the students below chit chatting talking discussing so i had a program there in the college so i asked the students what time college begins so they said college has begun <laughs> if college has begun i am supposed to give lecture there i said go give lecture <laughs> but i said where are the students we are all here <laughs> but college has begun and you are here said, that's why we are here <laughs> <laughs> so it was too transcendental for me to understand so i gave up that program and came back <laughs> so there are people who have never seen or they may not be interested and then because they have not even made an effort to study the whole semester one day before the exam they are looking at each other thinking ab kya karenge bhagwan bhi nahi bacha sakte bhagwan ko bhi kyon tension dena so they are in their own world so they are also blissed out but who's in anxiety the student who's in between kuch lecture attend kiya कुछ नहीं किया ही हैज अ डिजायर टू पास द प्रॉब्लम इज दैट बिकॉज ही हैज द डिजायर टू पास सो ही स्ट्रगलिंग टू सी हु ऑल टूक द नोट्स सो मेनी ऑफ सच पीपल हैव सच संग एट द जेरॉक शॉप फ्यू डेज बिफोर दे आर फिगरिंग फिगरिंग आउट वॉट टू डू वॉट नॉट टू डू यू नो and such people are in the most intense mood before the exam the topper is sleeping peacefully and the guy who has never attended he is sitting in the cinema hall <laughs> but here is the person who is in between like that it is described klishyanti antarito jana that one who has not heard anything about spiritual life he is in his own world one who is beyond desires is also blissful but those who are in between who have understood there is a goal in life and we have to try to follow it we have to practice certain rules and regulations 
and this is what sacrifice means this is what austerity means this is what tolerance means and this is what self sense restraint means such a person actually goes through difficulties because he is aspiring to progress on this path so therefore the past time of maharaj bharat is very very inspiring for those who are aspiring to progress on this journey because it is a symbol of tolerance as we embark on this journey and try to be dutiful there will be various challenges which will be cast in our direction one should not think that this whole journey will be peaceful and blissful and without any anxiety there will be challenges but like bharat we should be willing to carry the load and that is what balance means that even though the load may be there am i willing to carry the load and walk on this journey and this load of misunderstanding accusations bad character reputation and the climate of suspicion in which bharat maharaj was in ayodhya was extremely suffocating it was a kind of ecosystem and climate which would have made anyone totally discouraged and stop the journey take a break from the journey forget about the journey but bharat bharavahi he carried this load and did not stop on this journey that's the meaning of bharat shri prabhupad was one time served some kachoris and prabhupad told his disciple that keep few kachoris for tomorrow i will taste tomorrow so this disciple went to the kitchen there was a lady there he gave the kachoris to this lady in the kitchen and said i am keeping this kachoris here prabhupad will taste it tomorrow the lady said hey don't keep it here somebody will take it he said no 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 nobody will take it you take care no no i don't want to no no you take care so this was going on and then this devotee left next day he came where are the kachoris and the lady started searching it was not there i mean in his con temple you keep a prasad somewhere <laughs> what are the chances that you are going to find it right and so she said i told you not to keep the prasad here why did you keep it he said i told you take care of it why you didn't take care and then finally she said well prabhupad is waiting for you we cannot delay this you go and tell prabhupad if he asks some of the kachori that cat must have eaten kachori the cat has eaten cat comes to the kitchen no so cat has eaten just tell and she continued cooking so this devotee went to the room of prabhupada and came back and the lady was cooking and casually she asked so what did prabhupada say so she was smiling and thinking oh god knows how prabhupada must have responded and this devotee said prabhupada said whoever is saying cat has eaten they have eaten <laughs> so she felt so offended that how can he think like this he is accusing me of stealing i never did like this so she is thinking like that and that's how we respond when we feel i have been misunderstood i have been misunderstood i'm being accused of doing something i have not done this is unfair this is unjust krishna are you there are you watching are you busy playing your flute what's going on so we may think that well there is some injustice going on here and how can injustice happen to me that's the louder thing me injustice can happen but to me the world is filled with injustice but to me how can i is subjected to injustice the world is full of injustice the history is full of injustice but me <laughs> that becomes the problem and so bharat maharaj 
basically represents bhar one who carries this heavy load of suspicion and it so happened that vasishtha rishi led bharat maharaj to put fire to dasharath maharaj dead body and at that point vasishtha rishi turned to bharat maharaj and said just before death dasharath maharaj claimed at no cost bharat should be allowed to touch my body and perform my last rites because bharat maharaj has been a co conspirator in this crime along with kaikeyi and saying this dasharath maharaj departed just imagine a son has to live his whole life with the thought that my father misunderstood me and accused me of a crime i never committed and i do not have any opportunity to clarify it any more because he is gone and he had to live with that load of misunderstanding that is bharat and he would go early in the morning at 1 o'clock to take a bath in the sarayu why why he would go so early because he couldn't sleep or something why he would go at 1 o'clock in the morning to the sarayu to take a bath because the residents of ayodhya had mixed feelings towards bharata and the majority of the residents of ayodhya felt that bharat is responsible for sending ram to the forest bharat is responsible for the killing of dasharath maharaj bharat is the real conspirator behind kaikeyi and so whenever some of them would see bharat they would take rocks and throw at him and try to attack him and when they would see him in the morning they would curse themselves that the first person's face we had to see was this bharat so therefore in this kind of a climate bharat continued practicing his devotion his duties and his service to lord ram that's an example of balance heavy one bharat then comes lakshman लक्ष्मण जय शिष्य नादा गोपीनाथ जी की वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ द नेम लक्ष्मण राइट सी आवर फॉर्चून इज वी आर ऑल इन इंडिया एंड वी हैव ग्रोन अप हियरिंग अबाउट ऑल दीज नेम्स नोइंग अबाउट रामायण महाभारत भागवतम चैतन्य चरतामृत दीज आर ऑल पार्ट ऑफ अवर ओन कल्चर दीज आर ऑल नॉट न्यू टू अस but the problem is in spite of having heard about ramayan or maybe even have having heard ramayan or seen ramayan for so many years still people do not have the right perspective or understanding and the depth about what this actually means and in my experience of preaching krishna consciousness and teaching geeta in the last 25 years in india and different parts of the world i can share very confidently that in my 25 years i have not seen anyone in india who is actually a core atheist even those who claim i am atheist you scratch the surface little bit <laughs> suddenly from inside hey bhagwan <laughs> even when you know we were studying darwin theory and this and that so darwin theory is totally against you know any kind of theistic conception or faith in god and all but even before going for exam for darwin theory ganesh ji aashirwad do <laughs> darwin ke exam mein pass ho jao which is contrary to darwin theory so here is a place india where practically everyone has some connection to spirituality half the people's names are connected to krishna ram gods and demigods most of you not have studied you may not have studied gita 
very systematically, very thoroughly, in an organized manner, before coming to Krishna consciousness or coming to ISKCON. But still, each one of you must have gone to some temple, sometime, somewhere, and worshipped gods. Yes or no? How many of you have done? Raise your hand. So, you know, it's part of the DNA. <laughs> right? So, different countries in the world are famous for different things. Israel is famous for irrigation. Japan used to be famous for, you know, electronics. China is famous for manufacturing. Germany is famous for its vehicles and its engineering and technology. But whatever different countries in the world may be famous for, since time immemorial, India has been famous for one thing, which is spiritual technology. And when Srila Prabhupada went to London, the reporter asked him, Swamiji, why you came here? And Prabhupada said the British came to India and they looted so many things from here, including gold, silver, other kinds of jewels. But they forgot to take away one thing, the most priceless jewel of Bhagavad Gita, that I have come to give home delivery. And so in the last 50 years, ISKCON has distributed more than 50 crore Bhagavad Gita all over the world. And so you just cannot forget consciousness of God here in India. And if you really want to appreciate India, you have to connect to the spiritual culture. Which other country in the world will have this privilege that within two hours of any town, any city, any village, you will find a holy place where the Lord has performed some pastime, some very famous temple is there, or some special feature of the Lord's devotee is there. There is only one country, that is India. <laughs> Even if you try to smoke cigarette, there is Ganesh Bidi. And if you go out from the temple here, nearby is Sudama Palace, beer bar. <laughs> so one special feature of India is, Indians may forget God, but India will not allow you to forget God. <laughs> so that's the special feature. And so, it's practically the birthright of every Indian to understand their culture deeply. And so with all the college degree, university degrees which you will get, you will make your money. You will have your bread and butter, a roti and paratha. <laughs> but beyond that, what's the use of spending your whole life without knowing what Valmiki wrote, what Vyasdev wrote, and what all these literatures are. So the real pleasure in life is in experiencing the sweetness within these literatures. And when you are experiencing imbalance, you go through these scriptures and you read about how Personalities who were more powerful than us million times and were in a society more peaceful than ours million times were shaking. And when they were shaken up, how did they maintain their balance? And therefore the secret of maintaining life's balance is to connect with those who were shaken up. But how they managed to maintain their balance when they were shaken up that gives you the inspiration, that gives you the right methods and the proper guidance and direction to retain your own balance with respect to your head, hand and heart. And then you know, if Bharat could do it like this and Lakshman could do it like that, I should also do something. 
सो वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ लक्ष्मण सर्व प्रियकर राम सपी शरीर लक्ष्मणो लक्ष्मी संपन्न बहिर प्राण इव पर द वर्ड लक्ष्मण कम्स फ्रॉम द वर्ड लक्ष्मी द मीनिंग ऑफ लक्ष्मण कम्स फ्रॉम लक्ष्मी लक्ष्मण मीन्स समवन हू हैड द ग्रेटेस्ट अमाउंट ऑफ लक्ष्मी नाउ यू मे वंडर वॉट लक्ष्मी हैड एंड लक्ष्मी मीन्स वॉट वेल्थ एंड एज दे से मनी इज स्वीटर देन हनी कितना खुश हो गए सुन के मनी एज सुन एज यू से मनी देन समथिंग रिंग्स सो लक्ष्मण मीन्स वन हू हैज लक्ष्मी वंस अ वेरी वेल्दी पर्सन केम टू मी एंड ई वॉज टॉकिंग टू मी एंड ई सेड आई हैव सो मच वेल्थ which is like water in ocean samudra ke jal ki bhanti but the problem is that just like ocean water is salty however much wealth i am earning it is salty my thirst is not getting quenched but i see that you gorang prabhu <laughs> you are practicing spirituality and you are experiencing krishna consciousness and so you seem to have access to water in a well which is sweet and deep give me a few drops of your well water i said please take it <laughs> and you give me few drops of your ocean water <laughs> भाई साहब अगले छह महीने तक गायब थे सो मेनी टाइम्स वी मे थिंक लक्ष्मी मीन्स मनी एसेट्स प्रॉपर्टी बट लक्ष्मण हियर रेफर्स टू सर्व प्रियकर राम से अपी शरीर था bahir pran so what is dearest to us is our own life as they say jaan pyari hai pran right so pran means life which is the dearest so when lakshman would look at ram he looked at him as bahir pran this is my external life force ramchandra and service to his lotus feet is my life so therefore nothing was dear to him more than service to lord ram and therefore he was willing to serve lord ram at any cost sarva priyakaras tasya ramasya api sharirat he was not willing to compromise his service to lord ram and therefore we find that in all situations lakshman was always with ram who got banished to go to the forest ram so lakshman could have said oh my dear lord you are going to forest how many years you are going 14 years okay i'll pray for you <laughs> if the relationship is superficial and if we are only concerned about our comforts and we are not too attached to the service we may feel relieved also so lakshman was not feeling his service to lord ram to be like torture and when he heard the news that ram is going to forest internally he was rejoicing shanti 14 saal tak thoda aaram karta hu <laughs> lakshman was totally bewildered and he said i want to come with you i am coming with you my dear lord although the curse had been for lord ram wahan pe unko bolo shanti rakhne ke liye close this door sarva priya karas tasya ramasya api sharirata so therefore 
this is a very important point to appreciate that Lakshman considered Lord Ram's service to be his life and soul. So when we are on a journey, when you're looking at balancing, but the most important part of balancing is we should know we have to balance for what purpose? So Lakshman went through difficulty after difficulty in the forest. So, when they were in the forest, Lakshman, Sita and Ram went to the ashram of Guha. So Guha was a forest dweller and when Guha saw Sita, Ram and Lakshman in the forest, immediately he offered them straw mat, straw bale to sleep on. So Sita, Ram immediately slept on in the middle of the forest on that straw. It was a very simple dwelling. They were right in the midst of forest, surrounded by trees. At that moment, Lakshman stood there with weapons in his hand and he refused to go to sleep. And so Guha looked at Lakshman and said, Hey, why you are not sleeping? Sita and Rama are sleeping. Why you are not sleeping? Lakshman said, I have seen Sita and Ram sleep on the softest, most opulent beds of Ayodhya. I have seen Sita and Ram sleep on bed which is as soft as foam. I cannot accept to see the goddess of fortune and the husband of the goddess of fortune sleep on the floor on straw. And I take this as my personal responsibility that I will protect them day and night in the middle of the forest and make sure that no animals, no demons attack them. Until we return back in 14 years back to Ayodhya, I take a vow now and here to give up one second of sleep. I will not sleep even for one moment. And Lakshman took such a vow. And he went without sleep for 14 years. This is a big deal. To whatever extent you may be inspired by hearing that. <laughs> After you go home tonight, <laughs> you will say, Jai Lakshman. <laughs> <laughs> Even in the wildest dream we cannot imagine and we don't recommend also. But that was the attachment to the service which Lakshman had. And he was so attached to performing this service. And the same Lakshman when he was guarding Sita. So at that point, Marich called out, Hey Lakshman, hey Sita, in the voice of Ram. And Ram had gone trying to catch the deer. And at that time, Sita heard that voice and told Lakshman, Lakshman, this is Ram's voice. He's in trouble, he's in danger. Lakshman, please go. Lakshman said, Sita Devi, I am in this business for a long time. <laughs> I deal with demons all the time. This is one of the demons. This is not Ram. Sita Devi said, no, this is Ram. You must go. Lakshman said, Sita Devi, please try to understand. Lord Ram has given me instruction not to leave you. I'm supposed to guard you. I cannot leave you. Sita Devi said, I'm telling you, I'm ordering you, I'm forcing you. Lakshman, go now. Lakshman said, relax. <laughs> he may not have said relax. <laughs> <laughs> but he just said, well, I'm very confident. Nothing can happen to Ram. Don't worry. And then Sita Devi, she looked at, close this door. Sita Devi looked at Lakshman and said, I know why you are not going. The only reason you have come from Ayodhya and traveled with us all these 13 plus years is simply so that you get an opportunity 
when you can be with me alone and enjoy me that's the only reason why you are traveling with us that's the only intention which has inspired you to come here and this was sita devi's accusation to lakshman to a servant who has not slept for 13 years and who's serving without a salary who's serving with no expectation and in the forest during one was whatever item sita would like she would point oh this red colored rock looks beautiful we will keep it in our palace in ayodhya in that room lakshman pick it up <laughs> lakshman would pick it up some other item she would find oh this beautiful carved wood looks so good lakshman <laughs> so lakshman had become kind of a default shopping bag <laughs> and he had done all that with no expectation and when ram showed the jewels which had been left behind by sita when she was kidnapped and taken by ravana the jewels of sita devi her earrings were obtained and given to lord ram and lord ram shows it to lakshman and says lakshman can you recognize sita devi's earrings and lakshman says naham janami keyure naham janami kankane nu pureva vijanami sita padav bandanat in my whole life i have been serving you and sita devi with such diligence that i have never looked upon sita devi beyond her feet so i do not even know how her earrings look with that kind of diligence with that kind of attentiveness and sincerity lakshman has been serving and is accused that you have come only to enjoy with me what was lakshman's response what would be our response my chala tera saal time pass kiya maine ha aur lakshman didn't call a press conference aao sab log case karne wale hain secretary abuse case so lakshman in that circumstance of having been accused by somebody whom he tried to please diligently without having one moment of any other thought apart from pure service and he is being accused of duplicity ill intention and motivation under those circumstances he still had a desire to somehow protect sita so he didn't tell her tum marna tum maro mujhe kya hai samjha samjha ke nahi samajhta to main kya karu still he had the responsibility to make the lakshman rekha so all of us hear about the lakshman rekha but what was the background to that after having been accused like this lakshman still had the balance to perform his duty he said sita's words are not beautiful but i will continue to be dutiful and that is the meaning of balance so lakshman had only one principle in mind i will only be earning one wealth which is seva lakshmano lakshmi sampanno he just wanted to be sampanna with lakshmi of seva and to get that seva and continue that seva he was willing to take any kind of blame 
any kind of accusation, go through all kinds of difficulties because he simply wanted to serve. And then when he goes to Ram, Ram looks at Lakshman and says, you left Sita and came. I gave you order not to leave Sita. Lakshman, what kind of a Kshatriya you are? You are incompetent. Just imagine. Wife accused him of ill intention. Husband accused him of having no competence. So if you are accused of not having competence, not having intention, what else is remaining? So Lakshman could have told Ram, Pati Patni Sambhalo Bhaiya. I am going back to Ayodhya. I am sending the next party, Bharat and Shatrugan. <laughs> I am not going to continue like this. So when you go to any temple and you see Sita, Ram, Lakshman standing, you have seen Ram Darbar in temples? Ram is there, Lakshman is there, Sita Devi is there, Hanumanji is there. There is a sweet smile on the face. You have seen of the deities? Serene, peaceful, they are holding the bow and arrow and everything. But behind that, what they had to go through, so that finally they could still stand like that. They have gone through a lot. So therefore, each one of us has to realize that we have to go through a lot before we can actually claim that we have understood the real purpose of life. And so here is Lakshmano, Lakshmi Sampanna, Bahir Prana, Iva Paraha. So these are the purports of the names of Ram, Bharat and Lakshman. Ram, the embodiment of bliss, appears in Ayodhya, drowns Ayodhya in an ocean of sorrow. Bharata, who the foremost devotee of Ram, never had the luxury of having his name beyond suspicion. He was always serving in a cloud of suspicion. He was always serving with people misunderstanding him. And Lakshman, for him, his entire wealth was service to Ram, but he went through so many ups and downs and had to tolerate all kinds of difficulties to continue his service. So this is the gist of Ramayana. And now when we come to the past time where Vishwamitra Muni comes to the palace of Dasharat Maharaj and Dasharat Maharaj is in great ecstasy. He receives Vishwamitra Muni and he says, Munivar, Please accept my throne. Please sit here. This whole kingdom is yours. So in ancient times, that would be the protocols of great kings. When sages would come, they would offer their entire kingdom to the sage. Nobody can imagine nowadays. Right? But that time, even the sages were so renounced. They did, they did not immediately accept it and say, oh, I was waiting for this moment. <laughs> so they would accept it and give it back and that would become the prasad. So Vishwamitra Muni was honored by Dasharat Maharaj and Dasharat Maharaj said, please accept any benediction, whatever gift you want, I will offer. So he did not expect what Vishwamitra Muni would ask. And Vishwamitra Muni asked what he did not expect, Ram. And Dasharat Maharaj felt totally bewildered. Here he was who had conquered over so many enemies and he thought he had the power to fulfill anybody's desire was taken by surprise. But then because he had made this promise, what could he do? He tried to convince Vishwamitra Muni that please take anything else. Why do you need Ram? And Vishwamitra Muni said, there are so many enemies, so many demons, and I need Ram to be able to conquer over them. And Dasharat Maharaj said, I will come with you. 
I have huge armies. My armies will come. I have conquered over so many enemies. We have won so many battles. I am much more qualified than Ram. So Dasharath Maharaj was sharing his own CV. <laughs> Please employ me. Not my son. And he was saying, Ramo Rajiv Lochana. His eyes are just like lotus. Which means as soon as the sun sets, the lotus closes. Like that, Ram also goes to sleep. Ram goes to sleep and the demons, they become more active at night. So therefore they are called Nishachar. So Lanka was a place where all night party would happen. <laughs> and so the demons, they are very active and energetic at night. How can Ram counteract them? Number one, his education is not complete. He is still not a fully trained Kshatriya. He is only 12 years old. His limbs are not fully formed. He is an adolescent. And then he is used to sleeping early. So all this disqualify him for killing demons. Take me. So Vishwamitra Muni was famous for various things. And one of the things was he would become very angry also. And that anger was not show. That anger was genuine. And the anger had power also. Because sometimes you may threaten, but you don't have any power. But Vishwamitra could threaten and he could actually make it happen also. So as Vishwamitra started becoming angry, Vasishta Rishi, who had previous experience of many, many years of conflict with Vishwamitra, he had full experience. Was it, what is this Vishwamitra Tattva? <laughs> so he turns to Dasharat Maharaj and says, Please, you have promised, let Ram go. Nothing will happen. So although Vasishta had own differences with Vishwamitra, but in this case he agreed because he wanted to protect the Kul or the dynasty. And so Vishwamitra Muni takes Lord Ram and Lakshman again comes along with him. And they are going through the banks of river Sarayu and they go to various places. It's a beautiful pastime described in Ramayana. And finally, they come to the place or the palace of King Janaka. And Janak Maharaj had uh, declared that anyone who wants to marry my daughter, Sita, has to lift this bow. And this bow had actually been given by Lord Shiva, and that was known as the Mahesh Chapa. Right? So this Mahesh Chapa was actually something in this family. How this Mahesh Chapa came was very interesting. One time, Indra was talking to Narad Muni. And Indra told Narad Muni, I have a great desire to organize a competition between Lord Shiva and Lord Vishnu to understand who is more powerful. So Narad Muni asked Indra, why you keep getting such ideas? <laughs> Indra said, you know, once and for all, there will be conclusion. Let's get a conclusion. Who is all-powerful? So he sent Narad Muni to Vaikuntha and Indra personally went to Kailash to give a proposal to Lord Shiva. At the foothills of Kailash, Nandi, who was the carrier of Lord Shiva, was there. Nandi looked at Indra and said, just by looking at your face, I can understand you have come to create trouble. <laughs> and Indra said, no, 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 no. I have just one proposal, simple proposal, allow me to go. So Lord Shiva's family is also unique. Shiva rides on bull. And Durga, wife, rides on tiger. On Shiva's neck is snake. Shiva's son Ganesh ji rides on mouse. Ganesh's brother Kartik rides on peacock. And on Shiva's neck is snake. Made for each other. <laughs> but although all of these tattvas are contradictory and are mutually enemies, but in Lord Shiva's family, they are all together and thus they demonstrate unity and diversity. That is Lord Shiva's family. 
So we should also learn how we can remain in unity in the midst of diverse principles. So then he told to Lord Shiva, I want to organize a competition between you and Lord Vishnu. Shiva said, I am his, great, I am his biggest servant. I want to just serve him. I have no other desire. What kind of a thought is this? He says, no, no, my dear Lord, please once. He said, well, as a service I will do it, but I will tell you the result right now. I am not going to be in any way, shape or form doing anything else, but get defeated. So in the meantime, Narad Muni goes to Lord Vishnu and says, my dear Lord, I have a desire. Vishnu said, what? I want to organize a contest between you and Lord Shiva. Lord Vishnu said, what? Me and Lord Shiva? He is my greatest devotee. There is no competition, there is no conflict. Lakshmi says, my dear Lord, I want to witness this. <laughs> and Lord Vishnu says, phas gai. Abhi to karna hi padega. And so then finally, Vishwakarma creates these two huge weapons. Vishnu Chap and Mahesh Chap. One for Lord Vishnu, one for Lord Shiva. But within moments, Lord Shiva accepts Lord Vishnu as his master and the competition is over. That bow came in the family of Janak Maharaj. And it was so heavy that more than 8,000 powerful Kshatriyas were required to lift it. After 8,000 powerful Kshatriyas who did not have back pain <laughs> would lift it. They would take few steps, then place it down and take rest for half an hour. <laughs> then they could lift it again. That was the power and the strength of this Mahesh Chap. So it used to be kept right in the middle of this assembly of Janak Maharaj. So one day when Sita Devi was hardly five years old, few years old, she was very young. At that time, she and her friends were playing and they, they saw some flowers and the friend said, we want to pluck these flowers. And Sita Devi ran inside the palace, picked up this huge Mahesh Chap, this bow of Lord Shiva with one hand, went out, plucked the flowers with that, placed the bow back. And the ministers who saw this got a heart attack. <laughs> they couldn't believe what they were seeing. They came running to Janak Maharaj and said, we saw something astonishing. Janak Maharaj said, what? Sita Devi lifted Mahesh Chap with one hand. And Janak Maharaj said, have you drunk or what? <laughs> How is it possible? You've gone crazy. And then the sages came and they confirmed. Janak Maharaj asked Sita, did you do like this? And Sita Devi said, I lifted it, but I kept it back. <laughs> so she thought she's been accused of taking it away or maybe it is lost or something. So Janak Maharaj got big tension now. Who will marry Sita? How she will get married? If her arms are so powerful <laughs> that what 8,000 Kshatriyas take to lift, she's lifting with one arm after marriage tomorrow, she embraces her husband, he will become chutney. <laughs> so how to find a husband? So at least minimum qualification of husband should be, he should be able to lift this bow. That is how this contest came about. Minimum qualification. <laughs> Eligibility criteria. So, so many big, big Powerful Kshatriyas would come, show off right in front of that bow. I mean, they couldn't take selfie then. <laughs> but they would come and speak so much about their glories and powers and then they would place their hands on the bow. They could not even move it. Even Ravana came. Even he couldn't lift it. So therefore, technically speaking, Whose arms are more powerful, Sita's or Ravana's? Yes? Sita. So when Ravana came and tried to kidnap Sita, all Sita had to do was, Laga <laughs> Jhapad. <laughs> all the ten heads would have gone flying in ten directions. 
<laughs> but then that would have become an action thriller. <laughs> Not a melodramatic, you know, plot where we feel sorry for Sita Devi and we develop feelings for Ram and start feeling compassion for them and try to understand how we can serve and help the Lord in this crying condition. So to help us evoke those emotions, Sita allows Ravana. Otherwise she knows within. <laughs> if I give him one, he's finished. There is no match. But then the rasas will not come across attractive to the heart. So therefore, she performs this as a service so that all of us can transfer our attention from sense gratification to try to serve Sita and Ram. And therefore, at this point, Vishwamitra looks at Lord Ram and says, Vatsa Rama Dhanur Pashya. My dear boy, Ram, just look at this bow. Dhanur Pashya. So when he just says Dhanur Pashya, Ram goes, lifts the bow, places his left foot on the lower part of the bow, places his right hand on the top part, strings it, and in one action-packed moment, strings it with so much power that the entire bow breaks into two and the entire universe resounds with the sound of the cracking of the bow and Lord Ram is victorious. <laughs> and as Lord Ram stands there with two parts of the bow totally broken, the sound of that cracking is so loud that all the residents of the palace they fall on the ground and faint. And then when they come to their senses, and Lord Ram sees from the corner of his eyes, Sita Devi is coming with garland in her hands. And Lord Ram tells her, stop. I was told by Vishwamitra Muni about breaking of the bow. There was no concept of marriage told. <laughs> that was not part of the deal. For that, we need separate blessings and permission. And so both the families came together, discussed and with full blessings, then finally the marriage actually happened. An interesting statistics I came across was, although there has been such an influx of love stories in Bollywood and Hollywood for last God knows how many years, still the percentage of arranged marriages in India is in the high majority compared to love marriage without blessings of parents. Another reason why India is still glorious. <laughs> so here, Ram and Sita they are standing in front of each other. Sita is carrying the garland in her hand. Ram is also carrying the garland. And Janak Maharaj looks at Ram and says, I am Sita Mamasuta. This is Sita, my daughter. Why? Because Janak Maharaj is an anxiety that Ram is so enchanted by Sita's beauty that he should not start seeing Sita everywhere. And some other lady, he looks and thinks, this is Sita and puts the garland. So it will create trouble. So he says, this is my daughter, Sita. Make sure you put the garland here. <laughs> so Sita Devi's age at the time of this marriage is six years and Lord Ram's age is 12 years. And they are both standing in front of each other. Lord Ram is tall. Sita Devi is unable to reach. So she's standing there. But Lord Ram is also not bowing down. <laughs> and then both are standing looking at each other and Janak Maharaj is in again anxiety 
that with great difficulty I found a match. It should not fail at the last moment because of height difference. And so at that moment, Lakshman understands what to do. He jumps and holds Lord Ram's feet. And when Lord Ram sees Lakshman is at my feet, Lord Ram bows down. And when Lord Ram bends down, Sita Devi puts the garland and the marriage happens. See, when you hear about the marriage of Sita and Ram, it gives so much joy to the heart. So tomorrow is Ram Naomi. So we find that Lord Ram and Sita do get married. It's a blissful occasion. It looks like the bliss will continue. And as in fairy tales they say, and they live happily ever after. Which never happens. <laughs> and so here, the goddess of fortune and the husband of the goddess of fortune are entering Ayodhya and they will experience some fortune for next 12 years before the series of misfortune again begins. That's what life is all about. Find balance in the midst of chaos. And so, after they have spent 12 years, Dasharat Maharaj gets a desire. And he feels, Lord Ram is filled with divine qualities. We should make him the king. And Dasharat Maharaj starts planning in a way that Kaikai's father should not find out because he had given him a promise that Kaikai's son would become. But he wanted to do it quietly without anyone finding out. And he did not invite Janak Maharaj also for that ceremony because Janak Maharaj was very righteous and dharma parayan. And if he finds out that a promise has been made to Ashwapati, the father of Kaikei, that Kaikei's son would be made the king and that is not being followed, Janak Maharaj would not accept Ram to be made the king. So Dasharat Maharaj was like planning that adjust in such a way that 60,000 years all my plans have been successful. Who will stop me? I am the king. It's not a coalition government. He's the supreme king for 60,000 years. And so, Dasharat Maharaj calls the entire assembly of citizens. And in the midst of that assembly, Dasharat Maharaj announces that I have a desire in my heart I want to take a decision with the consultation of all of the citizens. And I have decided that after 60,000 years of rule, I want to retire from the kingdom of Ayodhya as the king and make Lord Ram as the king. And there was a thunderous voice from the assembly. It appeared like a thunderbolt has struck. And everyone got bewildered. Tasharat got bewildered. He called his minister and said, What was this thunderous sound, a sound I have never heard before. Minister said, only if you promise me you won't punish me, I'll tell you. Dasharat said, hey, what happened? What was the cause of this thunderous sound? Minister said, the citizens, they were in so much of bliss. What you heard was the sound of their ecstasy where they were all exclaiming to each other, that in 60,000 years, this is the best decision Dasharath has taken. <laughs> and at that moment, Dasharath Maharaj started thinking, am I so stupid? Am I so useless? That people are rejoicing my departure? So, just see how the ego works. When Dasharath Maharaj was thinking, I am quitting. So he was feeling satisfied. When he thought the public is telling him, get lost. <laughs> he went on the defensive. Hey, hey, I will not leave. Why should I leave? Am I so bad or what? So that is how the ego works. 
and so dasharath maharaj could not be defeated by any armies by any weapons for 60000 years that king who could not be defeated by any weapons and any armies for 60000 years felt defeated by the rejection of people so therefore when a group of people reject us that is a bigger defeat perceived by the ego than all kinds of armies and their attacks and so dasharath maharaj was thrown off balance and he was thinking should i continue with my decision or not or should i prove myself again for few more years why they said like this so dasharath maharaj demanded why you are saying like that so the citizen said not your fault what you did was your best but you had one fault you gave birth to someone like ram who is so super excellent who can compare therefore his divine qualities are transcendental and so we are ecstatic to hear about such a transcendental supreme personality of godhead is going to actually become the king and that is giving us joy and do not perceive that this is your rejection then dasharath maharaj regained his balance and think, started thinking oh he is my son only <laughs> so therefore as we go through these past times they are very very fascinating and what we will see is they teach us so many lessons in life and what we should learn is thousands and thousands of years back when there was no social media when there was no whatsapp there was no facebook still mantra managed to create trouble in a kingdom which had not been defeated for 60000 years through what rumor mantra means chan mantra so she is the original you know internet <laughs> and she just cast the doubt in the minds of kaikai and kaikai got bewildered and then the entire kingdom got devastated that kingdom which could not be defeated by armies got defeated by a rumor so therefore rumor can be more powerful than armies also and so the entire kingdom could not manage to maintain their balance because somehow or the other mantra's rumor devastated they went through sorrow they went through suffering for 14 years but they were waiting with patience for lord ram to return and when lord ram returned they celebrated lord ram's return by lighting all of their homes and houses to welcome lord ram and that is celebrated as which shows that they lost their balance but they waited patiently till lord ram returned and then regained their balance so therefore if you have a purpose for which to live for circumstances in life will throw you off balance and there is no power on this planet which can stop you from being temporarily disturbed and agitated whatever skill you may have whatever technique you may follow you have to get disturbed we have to get affected but if you are clear that this is going to be my destination this is going to be my journey however much disturbance may be there in the journey i will not leave the highway at any cost and will only rest when i reach the destination <laughs> and that in essence is the message of ramayan and that is what krishna calls in bhagavad gita as yoga or connection 
So when you are on the path of yoga, whether it is Ashtanga yoga or Bhakti yoga or any other yoga, you are beginning your journey of connecting with a superior purpose. Because what's the point of driving smoothly when you have nothing in the GPS to take you to? So therefore, maintaining life's balance is all about entering the right destination in the GPS. So that even if the journey is temporarily affected, sometimes it may slow down, sometimes it may be a bumpy ride, sometimes there may be a short accident, but as long as the GPS carries your destination, you will ultimately manage to reach that destination with the proper inspiration, with the proper support, with the proper association. And that is the essence of satsanga, the association of devotee which inspires us to move on in this journey and inspires us not to give up our efforts to reach the destination in spite of all kinds of difficulties and challenges. And so we look back, we look back into the pages of Ramayan and see such characters who were so powerful, so divine, but their lives went through so many challenges and ups and downs, and they continued on in the journey till we have the darshan of Sri Sri Radha Gopinath Ji, and the journey comes to a success. Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna. So you told the meaning of all the three brothers, but the fourth one is left. What is the meaning of Shatrugna? Are wow, kya baat hai? Aapka naam kya hai? Durvesh. So Shatrugna, Nitya Shatrugna, Nitaha Preeti Puraskrita. So Shatrugna basically refers to one who conquers over the enemy, Shatru. But in Ramayana, there is description of Shatrugna being sent by Bharat to Mathura to kill one demon, Lavanasur. So, in that period, Shatrugna killed only one demon. So, for killing one demon, to give somebody the name Shatrugna will be little too much. <laughs> If someone in 25 years of life in his con distribute one small book, <laughs> you can't call him book distribution personified. <laughs> so therefore, why Shatrugna is called Shatrugna? Because the greatest enemy which he ha we have in serving a master is our ego. The whole Ayodhya was serving Lord Ram, glorifying Ram, attracted to Ram, enchanted to Ram. Everywhere there was only goonj or loud sounds, vibrations, reverberations of service to Lord Ram. In such a situation, Shatrugna was totally dedicated to serving Bharat. So Lakshman served Ram, Shatrugna served Bharat. But when Shatrugna served Bharat, he did not think, I am serving somebody who is highly misunderstood, not popular. The whole world is glorifying Ram. I am getting opportunity to become servant of someone who is not number one. So many times when we serve, we have an inner aspiration that we should be the number one servant. That means we should serve somebody who is at the top. And if there is any problem, then the enthusiasm to serve that person goes away. So therefore, Shatrugna could have thought that the whole world is misunderstanding Bharat, suspicious about Bharat, 
So naturally, so many people may have come and also given feedbacks to Shatrugna. Are Bharat did like this, Bharat did what guy you are serving here? But in spite of hearing all that, Shatrugna never gave up serving Bharat because he had conquered over the Shatru or the enemy of his false ego and he had no other thought and aspiration apart from serving Bharat under all circumstances and that is the meaning of Shatrugna. And so, from another perspective, Bharata had so much confidence in Shatrugna that Nitaha Preeti Puraskrita. When I pick up an object, then I have no doubts that the object will not protest. The object will just come along with me. So, Bharat Maharaj had so much of confidence that I could do anything with respect to service and delegate any service to Shatrugna and he will not refuse and I do not even have to sit and negotiate and have a dialogue whether he is inspired to do this, does he want to do this, is he into it, what, do, what will it take for him to do this. Just like you pick up something and you move on, Bharat would just pick up Shatrugna and take him along and engage him in seva. Why he could do that? He did not have any personal agenda. He did not have a false ego which was creating an impediment. So, Shatru Gna, one who has conquered over the Shatru of false ego. Any other question? Yeah. Hare Krishna Bruji. First of all, thanks for such a wonderful, inspiring lecture. Prabhuji, uh, while lecture one of statement, you said that uh, Maya always finds trap for everyone. So when we are practicing Krishna consciousness, we always take guidance from senior counselor or we are inspiring devotee. Uh, even after that, Maya still finds some trap. So how to protect ourselves? Continue taking inspiration. <laughs> and that name of inspiration is called Prerna. So you are sitting right here, even if you try to run away, there are so many people who are ready to stop you. They will not allow. Will you allow? No. Here they go. <laughs> so you have actually managed the best kind of Z security against Maya. And the highest form of Z security against Maya is the Vaishnava satsang. And you are having too much of that here. Okay, yeah, next. Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you very much. Prabhuji, many times we hear classes of so many devotees and we get enlightened for some time. Some time? But <laughs> when... So Dear when when some, danger, some, time. some dangerous thing comes to us, ah. uh, the faith, the same faith is not there. Mm -hmm. So, how to regain that faith and how to continue with the Come same Come again faith? for the next class. <laughs> <laughs> again you will get the faith. It's a fact. There was this pujari in, you know, one of the temples in the west. He thought, I have done enough puja work. Let me take a break. So he went out to take a, you know, stroll in the beach. Jai Shri Ji Ki. So he was very attached to surfing. So he took a surfboard and went out surfing. So when he went out surfing, that day shark came. And he was thinking, before shark never came. After leaving temple, shark is coming. Why? Because Krishna sent so many Shiksha Guru to bring you back including shark. <laughs> so when the shark came, this guy started chanting all kinds of mantras. Nursing Arthi, he knew. He had spent sufficient time, five, six years in his con temple to know in emergency which button to press. <laughs> 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 
in emergency he called for lord narsingh dev and all aartis he chanted shlokas whatever and he shark was still coming then he finally said my dear lord he called the deity's name and said i gave up your seva i came under the influence of maya but today just today if you release me from this shark as soon as i leave i will come directly to the temple <laughs> and never leave again so the shark came near looked at him decided to do fasting <laughs> circumambulated went away so this man came back to the temple the temple president said where were you he said wherever i was i am not going anywhere now <laughs> <laughs> so you have your choice no one can take away that choice but you hear and understand that in different situations what choices you want to make okay next question yeah are any any newcomer yeah send to this to have some newcomer quota also हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण सर हम नॉर्मली चैंटिंग करते हैं तो न्यू कमर भी चैंटिंग करते हैं सर बहुत एडवांस न्यू कमर है ये तो ठीक है सर ये हमारे सारे इनसे इंस्पायर होकर मैं चैंटिंग करना शुरू किया था ओके तो डेली लाइफ में नॉर्मली चार कभी छः ऐसे माला हो जाता है पर सर्विस तो कभी कभी टाइम नहीं मिलता दिन में तो डिसकंटिन्यूटी हो जाती तो कुछ तो मैं आपके लिए करूं क्या माला बहुत कुछ सेवा कर रहा हूं ये भी कर लेता हूं कल मेरे को मैसेज भेज देना है कितना करूं मैं एनी अदर क्वेश्चन of a newcomer who is not chanting <laughs> we go to the next level of newcomer wah <laughs> wah ek haath utha ha uthaiye aap chanting nahi karte na iskon mein pehli bar aa rahe ha chalo puchiye hello ha hello hello main hu main yahi hu आपके प्रश्न का उत्तर दिए बिना नहीं जाऊंगा बोलिए सर सर एक्चुअली मैं अपने लाइफ से सर फ्रस्ट्रेट हो गया हूँ सर समझ में नहीं आया सर क्वेश्चन ये है कि सर वो सुनने दो मेरे से फ्रस्ट्रेट हो गए क्या नहीं लाइफ से सर अच्छा लाइफ से लाइफ से ठीक है एक्चुअली सर मैं अभी जॉब कर रहा हूँ बैंक में उसके पहले मैं सर सी करता था ठीक है तो सी में फर्स्ट स्टेम सेकेंड अटेम दिया क्लियर नहीं हो पाया ठीक है तो समझ में नहीं आ रहा था कि लाइफ में अब दो तीन साल इन्वेस्ट कर दिए आगे अब क्या करें समझ में नहीं आ रहा था अभी सीए कंप्लीट हुआ कि नहीं नो सर तो कर कीजिए सर वही क्वेश्चन है वो अच्छा अच्छा पूछिए पूछिए सर देन आई स्टार्ट वर्किंग इन बैंक आफ्टर डेट आई कुडन कॉन्सेंट्रेट ऑन माई स्टडी सो हाउ कैन आई बैलेंस माई वर्किंग लाइफ विथ माई स्टडी सो दिस इज द्वेश्चन तो बेसिकली if you find an expert and follow the expert that is the fastest and the best way to aaj ab yahan par itne log hai na isme se kai ca mil jayenge to unke sath dosti banaiye ha koi ca hai ke haath uthao ha ek haath uthao wahan pe aur ek ek professor sahab upar baithe aur ca ek aur yahan baithe teen to yahi mil gaye तो क्वेश्चन आपका सफल रहा <laughs> तो प्रसाद के साथ साथ हम लोग यहां पर एम्प्लॉयमेंट एक्सचेंज भी कराते हैं <laughs> है कि नहीं लेकिन सीए का अर्थ कंप्लीट आराम नहीं है बहुत काम करना है सो यू प्लीज डू कनेक्ट विथ दोज हु आर successful and definitely 
you can definitely try your best but also know that Gita is teaching the deeper definition of success is you try your level best to do what you can right because I am I was just uh, talking to a group of people who were studying for UPSC and uh, you know some of those students came and told me for since four years I'm trying for UPSC to become IAS but I'm not passing but this thought is also not going away and I'm not able to do anything else also so you are allowed to have aspirations but if somehow due to certain reasons those aspirations cannot be fulfilled what we learn from Bharat is that even in the most negative circumstances our ability to manipulate circumstances is limited but our ability to stimulate our consciousness is unlimited understand that So if you want to crack the CA exam, we may not be the most competent authority to guide you on that. Right? So you have come here to help to understand how you can manage your consciousness in a way by which you can remain positive, inspired, with full enthusiasm, irrespective of whatever task you are performing in the future. This country has facility to admit few bureaucrats, some number of chartered accountants, some seats in IIT, some seats in prestigious medical colleges. If the whole student community of India feels that only if I get all of these seats, then I will be happy Otherwise, I'll be miserable. The country will be filled with morose youth who are not inspired to do anything and that will be the greatest loss. So therefore, which is greater? The number of prestigious seats available or the number of students in the community? So the number of students. So naturally, you are looking at a scenario where majority will not be able to actually fulfill the dreams which are created due to media, due to other kinds of social scenarios. So this is the situation where all the more you need organizations like ISKCON to help youth cope with the situation because they cannot manipulate circumstances. The only choice and hope they have is how they can stimulate their consciousness to remain completely absorbed and inspired in life. Okay, your good name? Raja. Raja? Oh. <laughs> that was the best part of the question. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Raja. We'll search for a kingdom for you soon. <laughs> yeah, one last question. Uh, there was one, uh, yeah, that. Uh, huh. Yeah, we had a Pelwan sub. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Har Har Mahadev. Har Har Mahadev. <laughs> Jai Sri Ram. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Guruji, how can a Bhakti Yogi and a Kyan Yogi and a Karma Yogi can reach to the path of enlightenment? Now we will do that. That is called Kirtan. <laughs> so what happens in Kirtan is the conclusion of all Shastras. Vyasadeva wrote all Gyan. Vyasadeva ke baare mein suna hai na? Hmm. So who, he wrote all the literatures, four Vedas, Upanishads, Vedanta Sutra, Puranas, Mahabharata. Then 
द बेस्ट कंपोजिशन व्यासदेव रोड इज कॉल्ड श्रीमद भागवतम सो दैट इज कंसिडर्ड टू बी द समम बोनम ऑफ ऑल नॉलेज सर्व वेदेतिहासा नाम श्रीमद भागवतम इष्य सारम सारम समुद्रतम इट इज द कंडेन्स्ड एसेंस एंड इन दिस श्रीमद भागवतम द लास्ट वर्स ऑफ भागवतम से नाम संकीर्तनम यर्व पाप प्रणाशनम प्रणामो दुख शमनम तम नमा हरिम परम सो व्यासदेव इज द ग्रेटेस्ट गिवर ऑफ ज्ञान अमंगस्ट ऑल द ज्ञान विच ही गेव he rated shrimad bhagavatam as the highest amongst all the shlokas of 18000 verses of bhagavatam the last words of bhagavatam says nama sankirtanam so that means the total conclusion of all gyan is nama sankirtanam you agree yeah so <laughs> Sir, but by only sankirtan and yagya, I can attain the path of samadhi and enlightenment. Yeah, but to maintain the sankirtan yagya all your life, you have to also include karma and jnana in terms of your activities you offer on a daily basis in divine consciousness to Krishna, yad karoshya dasnasya juhosi dasnasya, yad tapasya si kauntiya tad kurushwa madarpanam. so that is the karma yoga which you follow in bhagavad gita and then the knowledge yes. because today you heard so many ups and downs of so many characters so when you go through ups and downs in life rather than sitting and smoking cigarette with four other people who are frustrated and then you know quoting jindagi cigarette ka dhua hai <laughs> instead of that open ramayan open bhagavatam and you go through all these personalities who have also gone through challenges greater than ours then you feel inspired that i am not the only guy who gets beaten up in life sab pitte hain pehle bhi pite ab bhi pit rahe hain bhavishya mein bhi pitenge lekin chahe log kitne bhi pite lekin humko bhagwan shri krishna ke samne apna sar jhukana hai that is the goal of our life and that is ultimately what all knowledge brings us to so therefore you continue in this journey in the association of so many devotees and knowledge action devotion focus absorption that is described in second chapter bhagavad gita yoga is defined yoga stha kuru karmani sangam tyaktva dhananjay सिद्ध सिद्ध समभूत समत्व योग उच्चत रिबोल धन्यवाद सो आपका नाम क्या है शिव शिवम हाँ शिवम सो देर फॉर इन दिस वर्स कृष्णा इज डिफाइनिंग योगा एज हैविंग ऑल फोर एलिमेंट्स योगा हैज एलिमेंट्स ऑफ एक्शन कर्म नॉलेज ज्ञान फोकस अष्टांग भक्ति which is devotion so bhakti yoga has all these elements in full it has action it has knowledge it has focus and it has service without selfish consideration therefore krishna is defining yoga as bhakti yoga in this particular verse which is defining the yoga principles Hare okay Krishna. so thank you all very much and uh, hare krishna